Oh, hey, Gal. Hey, Galveston, here's a quick question. Have you ever read an EC comic? What? What's an EC comic? Well, EC comics, they were basically a bunch of horror comic stories that were mainly produced in the 1950s and 1960s. They were short anthology stories with themes of like murder and um, ghosts, goblins, zombies, things like that. There was always a, a nasty character in the story that would get their comeuppance right at the very end, or there'd be like a real cool horror twist that would kind of make you go, oh my god! That was until uh, obviously the comic code came into production in America and ruined everything and they kind of got pushed out the market and closed down forever. But now you can get them in these really cool archive books and they're really, really cool reprints. I've, you know, I've always been a massive comic book fan and um, horror comics just really get me going. I mean, the art in these books and, and the stories, they're just, they're just fantastic. If you've never read an EC comic, guys, you really should get out there and buy yourself some of these archive books. They're fantastic. What are you on about now? You strange, sad little man. Well, you know what, Galveston? Just because you've never seen one before, I thought I might read you one. Well, this is going to be a howling good time, isn't it? Yeah. Welcome to Jack Horror Hound's Comic Book Corner. <laughs> Shut up! Oh, sorry. God, he still thinks he's funny. Uh. So, Galveston, our story starts... Strictly from hunger. <laughs> So our story starts with a bunch of armed men standing around a cave and it's kind of clearly seen that it's in the 1950s era based on the guns and the clothes that the characters are wearing. They seem really worked up about something that they followed into the cave but only one person seems to know what it's all about. You sure Phil? You sure it's in there? I seen it I tell you. I seen it go in. It was horrible. Horrible. Come on let's get in and get it. No wait don't go in there. It won't do you any good. Listen to me. I really feel at this point it's probably wise to listen to this guy. What do you think, Gal? Oh, I don't know. Just get on with his story. Okay. The posse stood before the cave entrance, their guns leveled at its yawning black mouth. Oh, come on. Turn it down a bit. Sorry. Just getting excited. We gotta get it, Doc. Whatever it is, it's killed ten townsfolk already. Stripped them out of their flesh. Phil's the first guy what's seen it. That's right, Doc. I followed it. It came from Pete Feely's place. Probably got him, too. I saw it before you did, Phil. A long time before. Huh? Then why didn't you say something, Doc? Why didn't you tip us off? Yeah, you might have saved us some lives. Because when I saw it, it wasn't what it is today. Do you think this character is related to the bad guy from uh, Readies of the Lost Ark, Galveston? What shall we talk about? I've never seen it. What? You better start talking, Doc, and talk fast. First, do what I say, then I'll tell you about it. Quick! Get a fire build, a big one! Soon, a crackling fire danced before the cave entrance. The posse members stood around Doc Chambers, glaring at him angrily. Okay, Doc, there's your fire. Now you get on with it. It's getting dark. You say you followed it from Pete Feely's place. Hey, Phil? That's right. I was coming across the valley. Did you see Pete? Shucks, no. When this thing came out of his cabin, I hightailed after it. I knew it must have been what's been doing the killings around these parts. Then you didn't see Pete. Have any of you seen Pete Feely since he became a recluse? Why, no, I, I ain't laid eyes on him. Been over a year now. Doc, you trying to tell us that that, that thing in there is Pete Feely? Lord, that ain't nothing human. No, that isn't Pete Feely. Not actual. You see... Does he mean not actually? Shh. You see, Pete came to me more than a year ago. He was scared. He showed me this lump on his arm. What is it, Doc? It's been getting bigger every day. Looks like a tumour to me, Pete. Uh, a cancer! Pete turned white as a ghost. He got real scared. Well, you would if you said you got cancer. That's fair enough. Uh, a cancer? Am I gonna die, Doc? Dunno, Pete. Dunno for sure, there's two kinds of tumours. One malignant, and it's bad. The other's benign, it's good. The malignant one keeps growing till it kills you. Take no use removing it. The benign one can be cut away, and that's the last of it. Rather succinctly put by the doctor there, I like that. Yeah, he doesn't really mince his words, does he? Which one's this, Doc? Which one? Dunno, Pete. I'll have to take some tests. Spinal tap. Great band. Shh. Some time later. Won't do you no good cutting this tumour away. It's malignant. Then, then I'm gonna die? 
Even in the short time it took to get back to the lab report, Pete's tumour had grown. Yep, I'm afraid so, Pete. I'd say two, maybe three months. I just love the lapsadaisical attitude of this doctor. Yeah, no kidding. And in this panel, what's actually happening with the doctor's eyes? He looks like he's got possessed or something. No, no! I don't wanna die! I'm a scared of dying! I, uh, I... Yeah, stop your belly aching. God! Winger! Am I right? <laughs> Take it easy, Pete. These things happen. We just gotta face them. No, no. I'll go to Bald Mountain. I'll see the old hag. I don't want to die. The fire flickered before the cave entrance. The posse stood around, staring at old Doc Chambers. You mean that's why we ain't seen Pete Feely? Because he died? No, Pete didn't die. He did what he swore. He went up to old Baldy to the hag. That phony! What could she do? It's the old hag, up an old baldy dock. She said I ain't gonna die. She promised. We made a deal. It's, it's impossible. That tumor should have killed you long ago. Pete had gone to see her. He begged her to pex him so he wouldn't die. She'd refused, but he would pleaded until... If I do it, if I hex you so you'll never die, will you make a promise to me, eh? <laughs> anything, anything at all. Promise me you'll never ask me to break the hex. Promise me you'll never come back to old Baldy. <laughs> promise? I promise, I swear it, anything. Only keep me from dying. I'm scared. So the old hag went through her incantations and black arts gibberish. Again, another knock against the doctor here. He's very culturally insensitive. I mean, what's happening in this panel? It looks like she's squeezing at some sort of white rat over the wound. Well, you know the old saying, gal, with stunning incantations and black art gibberish works in mysterious ways. And Pete came down from Bald Mountain hexed. Go on, you spect us to believe their nonsense, Doc? Once more. I went up to his place about four months after he'd first come to see me. I expected to find his corpse. Nothing more. And did you? He was still alive. By then the tumour had spread to his body. It was awful. Frightening. I'd never seen anything so ugly. And I got a strong stomach. Oh, Doc. Guess you never expected to find me alive. N n no <coughs> I, I didn't. We talked for a while. He complained. The only thing is, I'm hungry. Uh, all the time, I keep eating like a pig. You, you need the nourishment. You say that's the last time you saw Pete, Doc? That's right. I went up about a month or two after that second visit, but... But he couldn't let me in. His voice sounded strange. Go away, Doc. Go away. I'm alright. Go away. So suit yourself, Pete! So, as we're coming to the climax of our story here, the doc imparts these wise, wise words. You know what a cancer is? It's a growth. A bunch of cells gone crazy. They feed on healthy cells and grow. They keep growing, going crazier and crazier. And when they've eaten enough healthy cells, the normal person dies. But Pete couldn't die. No. So the growth finished off all his healthy cells, and it needed more healthy cells. So it started after them. Other peoples. The thing in there is a living tumour, a mass of cancer cells gone wild. Listen, it's coming out. All eyes turned toward the cave mouth, toward that sucking, gulping sound. The firelight danced on its livid, shimmering form as it slithered out. A huge blob of cancerous protoplasm. Good lord! <laughs> they began firing at it, pumping bullets into its slimy, rolling surfaces. Doc Chambers picked up a flaming faggot from the fire. Bullets won't kill it! Nothing will kill it! We'll have to drive it back into the cave! Come on, grab a torch, everybody! That hideous mass of diseased tissue recoiled as the searing torches were flung at it. Finally, it slithered back into the cave. Now what, Doc? We've got to block up the cave entrance. Since we can't kill it, we've got to imprison it. G get some dynamite. Oh yeah, because of course, people just, you know, casually carry dynamite in their back pocket. Dawn found the cave mouth sealed. 
Just pray nobody ever uncovers the entrance, that's all. It's got to stay in there. Forever! Oh, okay. That's the end then. So there you go, that was the story Strictly From Hunger, which was out of the Vault of Horror, volume number three. I highly recommend these these volumes, they're, they're brilliant. And that was a great one, it was kind of like body horror before body horror became a thing in horror movies. As I say, the art of these books are absolutely incredible, and the stories are really well written, especially for the time. And yeah, there are some questionable bits of dialogue, sure. And you know, you just cannot go wrong with horror anthology in comic book format. You know, if you are a fan of The Twilight Zone, or The Outer Limits, or anything like that, the story started here, folks. They started in the pages of the Vaults of Horror and other EC comics. You really need to get out there if you're a horror fan and pick some of these books up. And in the future, who knows? We might do another comic book review. Oh, whatever you. <laughs> I love you, Galveston. So as always, folks, you can like, subscribe, give us a comment. What did you think of this comic book review? Would you rather us do more comic book reviews or, or go back to movies? We're going to probably try and do some more in the future, but we're going to go back to movies next week. So don't you worry. We've got a really cool film coming up for you. But until next week, guys, stay safe, stay scared, and uh, yeah, you know, we'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>